Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning at Faith Lutheran Church, where we are alive in Christ to share the life of Christ with others. I'm Vicar Alex Dimke, and it's my pleasure to serve you in worship this morning. A special welcome to our guests and visitors. We're very happy to have you with us this morning. Everything you'll need for the service can be found either in the bulletin, which is on the back table, or on the screen in front of you. Today we're going to do the impossible. We're going to take hearts and ears that are closed that can't hear the word of Jesus and open them so that they can hear and believe what Christ has for them. That's what Pastor's going to talk about in his sermon this morning. We'll begin this morning with our opening hymn, hymn 236, verses 1 through 4. May God richly bless your worship this morning.
Please stand. We begin this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Savior, Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil, and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given us his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. who sent his only Son to die for us, give us peace. As we search for what we need, remind us of the one thing truly necessary for us, forgiveness. When we can't see your forgiveness, rebuke us, in order that we may turn and repent at your feet. Receive our penitential prayers and extend your grace over us, as you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. We continue with our first lesson for this morning from Isaiah chapter 35, verses 4 through 7a. As Isaiah speaks to the people of Israel, he speaks to us also. He speaks to us as he wants us to know that this pain, this problem of sin that plagues us every day, that God is going to send someone to deal with that pain. Not only that, he is going to come to avenge us. A lesson from Isaiah chapter 35, verses 4 through 7. Say to those with fearful hearts, Be strong, do not fear, your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution, he will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer, 
and the, tongue, and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling springs. In the haunts where jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading for this morning comes from Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. In Acts, we're going to see about how our desires and our needs oftentimes cloud our judgment. And when we're searching to fulfill our own desires and our own needs, we lose focus on the one truly needful thing that sits right in front of our eyes. A lesson from Acts chapter 3. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer, at three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Alleluia. respect for the works and words of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Our gospel lesson today comes from Mark chapter 7 verses 31 through 37. This will serve as the basis for pastor's sermon this morning. Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon, down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of Decapolis. There some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk. And they begged Jesus to place his hands on him. After he took him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spit and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Ephatha, which means be opened. At this the man's ears were opened and his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone. But the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. This is the gospel of our Lord. We continue confessing the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Creator of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, 
who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our hymn of the day, hymn 379. God's house today as we get ready to study the scriptures this morning. I invite all of you to open up your bulletin insert to page 5 for some message notes on our sermon text today from Mark chapter 7. The Lord's got a great message for you to hear and so do I. I'm blessed today to bring you news of the many mercies that comes from the heart of our God and are yours today. God's grace is yours this morning. And what a joy it is to proclaim to you the health and healing that's for your soul. God's peace is yours today to fill your entire being. Grace and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God, you just can't do anything right. Don't you suppose that's what he thought? He couldn't even say those words because he was so tongue-tied. And who knows if he could hear the sound of those syllables anyways because he was deaf. How many days, though, do you think he wandered through life thinking to himself, God, you just can't do anything right? He had the proof. He was the limit, living image of all kinds of problems. And I can only imagine that those problems plagued him every moment of every day. As soon as he tried to speak, they showed up in front of his eyes. He couldn't hear any kind of conversation that anyone was ever having. Talk about frustrating. And where is one want to go with frustration? What better place to take it than to God? To pour out the hurt 
in our hearts, the sorrow in our souls, in the best place possible. The Lord God Almighty. I don't think it's strange to think that the guy that we hear about in our text would have had this thought come to mind. God, you just can't do anything right. What would it take to change the mind of a man like that? A man who's likely stubborn and hard-hearted. A man who's hesitant to hang out with other everyday folks. A guy who probably didn't even want to go and see Jesus. What would it take to change that man's mind? Today, as we study the scriptures, Jesus wants to show us it only took one word. That's all it was. And one word would change that man's life forever. I want you to know that truth today, too. One word will change your life forever. In all of the complaints that we might bring before the Lord God, the creator of heaven and earth, for all the times when we've been plagued by problems and they're as clear as the nose on our face. When it seems like nothing ever goes right and God's the obvious one to blame, Jesus wants to call out to you today and speak a word to your soul. So let's go to Jesus and see our Savior and find a word that will change our life forever. Our text today is all about Jesus and the amazing power that he has. That power had gone out so far that crowds of people heard about the kind of things that Jesus could do. And so it changed their course of life. Let's see what they did for one of their friends. Some people brought to Jesus a man who was deaf and could hardly talk. And they begged Jesus to place his hand on him. That makes sense. The word about Jesus was getting out. He'd already done some pretty amazing miracles, like changing water into wine. He had cast out demons from other people in this very area where there's people, these people are gathered together. And so they thought, maybe we can get a blessing for this guy who hasn't been able to talk and can't hear the way he's supposed to hear. Let's take him to Jesus and see if this guy, just by laying his hand on him, can give him a blessing because he seems like a guy who's from God. So that's what they did. After he took him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spit and touched the man's tongue. Now there our Savior is, face to face, with a man who can't hear, with a tongue that's tied, he can't say what he wants to say. What would you do? Doesn't it seem odd to see what the scriptures proclaim to us today? Jesus got that guy alone, all by himself, away from the crowds, and he takes his fingers, his human fingers, and shoves them into this guy's ear. I can only imagine looking at him all the while. And then, for some strange reason, our Savior spits and touches the guy's tongue. If you ask me, that's all kind of odd. And my mom would say, that's disgusting. You don't do something like that in polite company. What's Jesus doing here? It seemed that this man, who might have been not only deaf and tongue-tied, had a heart that needed to hear from Jesus' own heavenly sign language. Jesus' fingers touched that sinful man's head. His fingers touched that sinful man's tongue. Because he needed him to know that change 
was coming. And then Mark records something that I think is just awesome. Jesus sighed. He did. God looked at this guy in the face and he sighed. You know, I, I wish Mark, in recording this account, would have told us more what that sigh was like. Was he annoyed that people only brought others to him because they wanted to have their external problems fixed? And he thought, I've come to save the soul, not just to heal the body. Maybe. Was he bothered that he was treated like a rabbit's foot, some kind of good luck charm? If this guy just puts his hand on him, his life will be better. And that caused Jesus to sigh. Possibly. But if you'd ask me, I think Jesus looked at this man's hopeless situation and he had a heart for him. He couldn't help but commiserate in how sin had utterly changed this man's life. And so, with a sigh, he looks up to heaven and says, Ephata! Staring his God and Father in the eyes. One word Mark records that he said. Some strange sounding syllables that even coming across in the Greek New Testament need to be transliterated so the people in the day could understand the real words that Jesus actually spoke. Mark does record what they meant. Jesus said, Be opened. And with a single solitary word, that man's ears were unstopped. That man's tongue was untied. He could hear and he could speak. What an amazing miracle, as Mark records it. The man's ears were opened, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. That's what happened when this man's hurt and sadness and sorrow met the Savior. With a single word, Jesus could melt all of his problems away. He gave him what his friends wanted and even more. No doubt the desire of this man's heart to hear to speak, to fit in, to belong again. What an amazing miracle that our Lord Jesus did in the life of this person. But I wonder if you've ever felt the same way that I can only imagine this guy certainly did. God, you just can't get anything right. We look around at our lives and we can see evidence right in front of us, all around us, and something that's skin deep and goes beneath the surface. We look at our filthy, stinking selves and wonder how God could make us the way that he did. Allow the things to happen in our lives that have. And we might call our creator to account and tell him the way things really are. Or at least the way we think that they ought to be. There are days when it's difficult to get our tongues to praise. There are times when it's almost impossible to get our earthly ears to hear exactly what our God is saying. Because in our hearts, we harbor our own hurt. We 
fill ourselves with sadness and sorrow. And we ruminate on everything that's wrong instead of taking our problems to the most important place. To the only person who can actually change things forever. It's easy enough for us to think that Jesus doesn't understand our lives. That he's not keenly aware of the problems that we face every single day. But don't believe those lies. Instead, learn the lesson that a guy who couldn't hear and a guy who couldn't talk learned from the mighty Messiah. With a single word, he can change someone's life forever. He can alter someone's eternal destination with a single solitary word. You know, in this account, after Jesus healed the deaf, mute man, all the crowds were utterly amazed. They looked at this guy and they couldn't help but cry out, he has done everything well. I mean, look at him. Everywhere he goes, he leaves healing in his wake. Everywhere he trods, people become disciples of God. It's like he's bringing heaven to earth. <laughs> they got it right. These folks got it right in a way that they couldn't even possibly know. Jesus really has done everything well. I think one thing that's astounding about this text, you know, it's possible that some of these people who would have cried out, he's done everything well, would be the very same people crying out at the top of their lungs, crucify him. We don't want anything to do with this Jesus guy. End his life. The same one who had done everything well didn't measure up to their expectations for what the Messiah was supposed to be. And so they discarded him. They didn't see him the way that Jesus revealed himself. As someone more than a healer. But a person who could save the soul. That's the whole reason Jesus came. To do more than just take away some kind of physical ailment. Whatever personal problems that we're dealing with today. But to dive in so deep, he snatches every single one of your sins from your soul. To rescue you from hell itself. And to make you a child of paradise. He wants us to see how not only has he done everything well, but by his life, he's made you perfect. There's nothing wrong about you at all in the eyes of a holy, gracious, and loving God. You are his own child. That's the whole reason that Jesus came was to prove that his power is so great, not even the devil can snatch you away. That's the hope that we have today. He can change your life today with just a single, solitary word. You know, he spoke a strange-sounding word in Aramaic to a guy a long time ago. He said, Ephatha, which means be opened. Yeah. I said to you already, Jesus can change your life with the word. That very same word. I wonder if today, if Jesus were here, gathered together with us, he would look up to heaven with that same kind of sigh when he looks at the sin and the grief and the shame and disgrace that characterizes us, 
as he points us to himself as the only door to eternal life. And as he tells you, his son, his daughter, the door to heaven stands open today for all who put their faith in me. Christian, listen as Jesus says to you, Ephata, and the doors to heaven swing open. And paradise is no longer just some ethereal place. But heaven will be your home. Now that's something that will change life today and forever. Amen. Friends, the peace of God, which goes beyond all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's rise and join together in speaking to our Savior as we join together in an ancient song called Create in Me a Clean Heart, O God. give an offering this morning, you can do so in the back, where there's a box, or online as well. A reminder to all, all he, people here at Faith, but especially our guests and visitors, that there's never any obligation to give an offering, but it's something that we get to do out of respect and thanks to our Lord and our Savior Jesus, who has given us everything. We'll continue with the prayer of the church. Heavenly Father, all-knowing and all-powerful God, open our ears. God, when we are lost in sin, lead us to the light of the world, which is your Son, Jesus. Lead us, for we cannot find Jesus on our own, since we are deaf and our hearts mute. We want to hear with your almighty voice, open our ears, and rebuke our sin with your mighty power. Lead us to repent of our sin and give us the grace which you have promised to give. Now that we can see your grace and hear your words and see the empty tomb, which ensures us of the hope of salvation, keep us from temptation. Keep us from the enticement of the devil, which would lead us away from the light and back into the darkness. Place upon our hearts the earnestness of gathering together so we can encourage one another to stay on the path of righteousness. Bless our time in worship to you as you have promised and assure us that where two or three are gathered together, there you are with them. Jesus, we want to see you. Lead us to see you here in your word and in our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the preparation for Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to our Lord, our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who promised that wherever two or three come together in his name, 
There he is with them, to shepherd his flock until he comes again in glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Christ on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and said, Drink from it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. time we invite forward our confirmed communicant members to receive the sacrament of our Lord. Do you know during the distribution we will sing one hymn, hymn 313 at our pianist's direction. Our ushers will show you forward.
go in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given unto death for you, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, poured out for you for the remission of 
all of your sins. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will strengthen you and keep you in the true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Savior Jesus Christ, given for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of the new covenant, shed for you for the forgiveness of all, sin, of all your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Go in peace. Your sins are forgiven. <laughs> we sing the song of Simeon. Thanks to the Lord, for he is good. We pray. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this holy supper. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you, increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. We'll close with our closing hymn, hymn 236, verse 5.
Glad to see you in God's house today and to have the opportunity to hear Jesus' life-changing words as he gives us his goodness and all of his grace. A joy to be here together with you in God's house here at Faith. There are a number of things happening here at Faith, and you're invited to attend almost all of them. Uh, we started a new Bible study this morning called Our Surprising Savior at 907. You're all welcome and invited to join us on Sunday mornings to grow deeper into God's Word as we see our surprising Savior. While we're having Bible study for the adults, there's a new opportunity for the youth among us. We have two different classes of Sunday school, one that's geared towards kindergarten through fourth grade and another group that's fifth through eighth grade. We have specific classes for each group. The upper graders are going to be going through the Old Testament this year. Hopefully we'll make it all the way from Genesis to Malachi, uh, taking steps through the entire Old Testament. Then our younger kids are using Christ Life. We'd love to have your kids come and be a part of that ministry. Or for you adults, if there's anyone interested in being a teacher, please speak with me after the service today. A couple other announcements about the things happening here at Faith. Tomorrow night at 6.30, we're having our first Making Life Better class. That's a class that we offer here that teaches more about what God has done for us and how he's made life better for you. If you look in your rows, you'll find a brochure that looks just like this. If you'd like some more information about what this class is and what it's for, take a look at this. If you know somebody who might like to attend this class, hand out this brochure. If uh, we can leave here today and all these brochures are gone, that'd be awesome. One way that we can share our faith with the people around us. Additionally, just this past week, we kicked off our toddler time program on Wednesdays at uh, 10 o'clock a.m. Anyone with kids between the ages of zero and five is welcome to attend our toddler time program. Uh, tell your friends about it. Wonderful opportunity for us to get the word out in our community and let more folks know about our many ministries here, in particular, our preschool ministry, uh, so they can get a look at our classroom and get to know uh, Mrs. Dimke and all the wonderful things that she's doing together with uh, Mrs. Koenig and Mrs. Sarah Praber this year in our preschool. Um, let's see. A couple other announcements about opportunities in our congregation. This coming Saturday, we're going to have a men's Bible breakfast at Barbie's Cafe. Again, my apologies. It's very mediocre coffee, but the conversation is excellent. The people are fantastic. Love to have you join us on Saturday at 8 o'clock a.m. at Barbie's Cafe. Just a hop, skip, and a jump down the uh, Lake Otis Parkway here. We'd love to have you there at 8 o'clock a.m. Then one more opportunity for our youth group on October 5th. That's a Saturday. We're planning to head out to Eclipna for a bike trip. Anybody want to go biking? We'd love to hit the trails together with you. If you're interested in attending that event, check out the details in the bulletin, and then you can speak with me after the service or any time at all. One more announcement for our group gathered together today. We're talking uh, together with our preschool folks about our Fall Harvest Carnival Festival or our Trunk or Treat event. And I wanted to get some input from our congregation as to what you would like to do this year. So anyone who's interested in helping out with an event like that, would you mind sticking around after our worship service today? And we'll take just a few five minutes to talk about what we'd like to see happen during that event. We'll do that immediately following the worship service. Once everybody's ushered out, we'll come back in and just chat briefly about what we'd like to see happen here for our fall festival so that we can get the word out to our community. Sound like a plan? Anyone is welcome to attend. All right, with that, any other announcements from our congregation? We'll save the best for last then. The Lord's richest blessings to you today, tomorrow, and always as you walk with Jesus. Have a wonderful week. Yeah.